Hello everyone. Welcome to Professional Cipher. This is the fourth episode in the Convolutional Neural Network series which has been published in this YouTube channel. So go check it out if you haven't seen the previous videos. In the last video we started about channels in convolutional neural networks. We started the topic with multiple input channels. So the example we gave was RGB image. So in case some of you don't have the context we know that a black and white image has a single channel and the pixels will be either 1 or 0 representing the binary nature which is black or white. But we know that colorful images vary in colors, the depth and all. So to represent that we need multiple channels which is basic colors which is red, blue, green. So each color will have its own value 0 to 256 in usual cases. So we give 1, 2, 3. And as the number increases, the quantity or the intensity of that color increases. So in such cases, to deal with images, we need multiple channels. So today's topic is multiple output channels. So just to give a small brief, here you can see that in the input, multiple input channel cases, the number of input channels, there will be the same number of kernel channels so that the corresponding elements can be multiplied and summed up giving us a single output which is 56 here then we use the strides and shift by one unit if the stride is one or two units if the stride is two coming to multiple output channels this is a really important topic because after learning this you will get a big picture on how CNN is actually used in machine learning and why number of channels increases and all Okay, so let's dive deep in, right? You can see a pictorial representation of multiple input channels coming to this image on the left. This gives us the big picture which I was mentioning. We will come to that by the end. First, let's see this, right? Okay, so let's understand what's happening here. The input channels, can you guess how many input channels we have? Yes, you are right. We have three input channels. Uh, let's say take the RGB image itself as an example. So let's consider this as the first input tensor. This can be something coming much later in the section of CNN, but let's assume that this is the input. So we have an RGB image, let's assume. But for a change, here you can see this is a basic case. Here the output tensor has only one channel. But from this case, we have multiple channels. You can see this one. And the, this is the second one. I hope you understood. Okay, so let's see how it works. So first we understand that we have two output channels and three input channels. Let's go to each one by one. First, let's take the first output channel. Right, I have marked red here. This one. So how operations are happening in that, right? Okay, so we can see that as we have three channels in the input, we will have three kernels, three kernel channels corresponding to work on the mathematical operations in each channel, right? So as mentioned in this case, you can see that we are marking the first output channel as light blue and the second output as dark blue, if you can see that. So let's go to the first output channel, which is light blue. So in the light blue kernels, we deal with the each tensor. So here, uh, three input channels. First, we contain the mathematical operation of this with this, then this with the behind one, and the last kernel with the last channel of the input. And finally, summing up all the multiplied products, we mentioned that here. We are not considering about the behind tensor now. The light blue kernels, as I mentioned, is the first output channel. So then after moving to stride, let me change the color so you get a better idea. And the next stride, we consider this area if the stride is one or it goes on. This is just a big picture given to understand what's happening. This more blue space can be a 3 by 3 or a 6 by 6 or something. It's just showing how each kernel deals with it. So in the next stride, we go to the next part, do the similar operation here. Then the second tensor will deal with here. Then the next tensor will deal with here. And the value will be stored here. 
you should understand that now we are dealing with the light blue tensor and we are not at all looking at the behind output tensor which is this one we are not dealing with it right now so then we will deal here here and finally after all the stride sense our first output channel will be filled right I hope you are getting a big picture of what I am trying to explain here. So thus we complete our first output channel. Similarly, then we go to the dark blue tensor. Here the dark blue represents the behind, the last output channel. This is the second output channel, right? So similar operations are handled over. Now comes the turn of dark blue. So similarly what dark blue does is these three dark blue tensors deal with these three first take the value to this position give attention to where i am marking i am marking on the second output channel the first cell on the next stride it will go here these three these dark blue tensors will deal with these three and the value will be here pay attention to where i am marking here similarly operations happen here 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 and the final value is represented with this dark blue circle which will deal with these three and the final value is stored here if you can see the place i am marking so thus a multiple output channel values are taken from the multiple input channel tensor so you can understand something like this say we have five input channels and ten output channels which is the usual case like the output channels keep on increasing in a CNN problem. So I repeat, we have 5 input channels, 10 output channels. Then what will we have? Or we can say, how many kernels will we have? Can you guess? We will have 10 kernels with each kernel having 5 channels. Okay, so 10 kernels with 5 channels each if you don't understand why 10 kernels with 5 channel each i will explain let's take this example itself we have three input channels and two output channels right so two output channels means two set of kernels and then three input channels means three channels of kernel each kernel has three channels similarly as i mentioned in the problem i gave 10 output channels and five input channels so 10 kernels with five channels each so this is how an output channel work multiple output channel problem works so coming to the big picture which i am talking which i was talking about you can see a three input channel problem being transferred into six output channel then the output channel keep on increasing and after a point the output is flattened and the result is taken which we will discuss the big picture we will discuss in one of the coming episodes so i hope the multiple output channel problem is clear just to brief about channels the rgb image can be taken as an example we first discuss about the multiple input channel problem in the previous episode which will help us start this episode's topic which which was multiple output channels in the multiple output channels i have clearly explained you how the max works how the operations are handled and how each cell gets its value and then we did a small example of how and given input and output channel how the kernels will be so i hope you found this video very helpful thanks for watching subscribe to professional cipher